Hey ladies and gentlemen, the biggest sale of the year is coming for Black Friday. Check out our website. We have many things, including the product we are going to review today. Stay tuned. Hey guys, how's it going? Shallow water anchors, pretty hot topic across the entire spectrum of fishing. We've installed and or used most of those, anything from talons to power poles to our own DIY version of power poles to our manual version that I had on my boat for a while. I like all those versions. This one I like the best. I'll explain why I chose this one, this very simple manual version of what a power pole is, what it does, and why it's really useful in a manual version and the advantages it has over all the others because it's completely manual and free swinging and why I've ultimately chose it over something like a micro anchor. It often gets compared to a micro anchor and people don't see the, the advantage. I think you're really stuck maybe on the, the electric component, the free component, the remote component, and I'll tell you why even with all that, it still doesn't compare. Stay tuned. <laughs> This is a custom 1232 Trekker topper. It's about the same size as a large kayak. Today we will be outfitting it with Roy's Shallow Water Anchors, which are a patented manual version of the Power Pole or Minn Kota Raptor. They are not hydraulic or electric. You will have to self-deploy and retrieve them, but the genius is actually in that design. The advantage that this sheer manual design has over its electric and hydraulic counterparts is that it can shift with the waves at ease. And it does this better than even a manual stake down system, which we've seen with 3 4 inch or 1 inch fiberglass rods into a holster. I replicated a DIY version of this and it worked really well, but when the waves pinned the boat forward or back while it was rocking up and down, the spikes stuck against the holster and that actually dislodged the spike. So I would eventually lose ground every so often, although it was the best at the time uh, that I had to like manually and free-flowingly readjust with the waves. But this system, that doesn't happen. If the boat racks back or forward, the crab blade compensates for that, as well as fluctuating up or down with the waves. Plus these are light enough yet durable enough to get them in a detachable platform, which this boat is all about detaching and portability. So you can break down key crucial components that you can put on later on after you've got the boat to the destination in a portable fashion like say the back of your truck bed your camper whatever and then when you deploy them man do they work well all right these are the shallow water anchors no i was supposed to grab that before i dropped it i was trying to hold my gopro so you could see them in here What's cool though is we were drifting into the shore and now we pretty much seamlessly stopped. Now look at these. When we flex, see what happens? They move with the boat. Now people are wondering why I, I did the linear actuator mod and then I said, you know, that's all cool and all to do just like a, for a project, but these will move with the waves. These aren't held under any motor and they will stay solid. That's really important because when waves come, stuff moves and these move pretty flawlessly. There's no binding, look at that. They're like staying put. All I'm doing is swaying back and forth. They're just digging in deeper the more I move. Actually, they're not even coming dislodged. Now we've been actually in this same position for ever since I dropped them, we haven't moved. Oh, and valuable for bed fishing. So nice out here. Humid as crap though, I'll tell you what. Those are dope. All right, so that was the initial testing for my custom watercraft. I went and tooled around for a while, and I even started to catch some fish. It's a pretty good day, but the water is glass. It was crystal clear that day, no wind. So we're gonna go ahead and take this boat on a windier, choppier day, and we're gonna see how they do in the waves. I'm gonna go ahead and stake it down and see how it does. I'm walking up and down the boat to simulate the back of the transom fluctuating with the weight distribution. That's gonna be really apparent in John boats as no matter how big it is, when you go up in the front, that flat bottom just sinks in the boat because there's no displacement there. So we walk up in front, no problem. We sway back and forth, no problem. It can hit by a few waves from boats passing in conjunction with the wind and the current chop, no problem. We stand there for quite a while. So how does this product compare to some of the electric automatic versions made out there for small watercraft like the micro anchor. That's the biggest comparison. What about the micro anchor? What about the micro anchor? I'll give you a consensus on the micro anchor and why I have never actually used it in any of my projects because um, I don't have a whole lot of faith in it. I'll be completely honest. It's nicest 
thing is that it is electric, it's small, it's portable, it's light, it's wireless for the most part. You can just charge it on batteries. I think it has a lot of good qualities about it. My deal is the micro anchors efficacy on the water. How good is right. it? I mean, there's no gear notches and the spikes. You can use any three quarter inch uh, fiberglass spike in there and it'll work. Meaning that I think it's just a rubber wheel circulating somewhere or maybe a group of them moving the pole up and down on, you know, on rubber wheel sliders. And so that, that's nice for getting the thing up and down, but there's no real digging power in there. It's not going to dig the way it needs to dig for something that's like electric or hydraulic to get in there. The reason that power poles and talons work is because that's a lot of actual power. Those poles dig in so much that they will lift giant bass boats out of the water a little bit and stay there. So when waves come and fluctuate and hit the bass boat, I mean, they really, it's hard to dislodge them. If, if the boat is actually physically pushed up in the water, it's really, really hard to displace those poles. Micro anchors are in no way near powerful enough to do that. In fact, a lot of times they get stuck and people have to go back there and dislodge them themselves, which kind of defeats the electric purpose if you have to do that. And they don't self uh, navigate. They don't self adapt like these do. These self adapt. They're perfect. No problems, no batteries. You deploy them, you retrieve them. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. If I had a if I had a kayak, it'd probably be a different story because because the bulk majority of the stability of kayaks is right in the middle where they sit, and then obviously it tapers the farther back and forth that you go on yaks. And so at that point in time, I don't want to be reaching back to self-deploy and retrieve an anchor like this, although it is doable. It doesn't seem like a you know the best thing at that point in time. I think a micro anchor is maybe invaluable. Plus, it's a yak, so you might actually have a little bit more leverage because of how light they are. But for a, a small watercraft, a, a tiny boat, even a bigger John boat, I mean. We have to have so many people using these on 18, 20 foot John boats and they use them religiously. We've seen them used out there on the John yachts out in the South Carolina river chain. So I would say that if you have a boat, these are a fantastic way to go. You cannot lose. It's an awesome product. We completely recommend it. We have them on our store links in the description and also in the comment section below. Check them out. Huge sale coming up here on Black Friday, tvnation.net. See you guys.